This is Brooks, the Access Control Expert with the AccessControlExpertSchool.com. In today's course, we're going to learn how to install the EMX IRB RET Retro Reflective Photo Eye that is UL 2018 compliant. In this installation, we're going to be welding the brackets for the photo eye and reflector. So you'll need to have a welder in order to accomplish that. In this particular step, we're taking the actual photo eye bracket and just tack welding it uh, real quick on the uh, side of the guide post. After we tack weld it, we're gonna make sure that we're level left to right. This accomplishes a couple of things, including cosmetics. But main thing is uh, you want to make sure that it is uh, left to right so you're not out of alignment with the gate. After we weld it and get it aligned, we're going to go ahead and burn it in. Now this uh, particular bracket is being welded to a very heavy uh, guide post. So we're having to burn it in in a couple of different spots. We just did two on each side. So after we're done welding, we're going to brush the welds to prepare for paint. The photo eye has already been prepped with a three quarter to half inch reducer as well as a flexible conduit fitting. The technician is making just an estimate of how much flexible conduit that he'll need. And now he's prepping the final length for the conduit and cutting it off. Here's the mounting hardware for the ring that attaches to the bottom of the photo eye. Now we've taken the back of the fitting off because the ring won't fit around it. Now he's taking two of the bolts and it's a bolt, a lock washer and a washer in that order and putting it onto the ring, mounting it to the photo eye. Now you'll leave these loose, but you need those on there in order to get the right alignment for the ring and to have the photo eye sit up there stable. Once you get those on there and get the ring around the bracket and uh, get that secure, then you can put the third bolt lock washer and washer in. And here's the fitting that we were just talking about, uh, taking it and putting it on the bottom of the photo eye. Before the conduit gets strapped down, you have better access to the bottom of the photo bracket. This is a good time to spray paint the welds. Before you install your wire, you'll need to expose the back of the photo eye. You can take an impact wrench on a very low torque setting or just use a Phillips head screwdriver to take the back cover off. Once the back of the plate is exposed, you can go ahead and feed your wire down through the conduit and cut it to length. This technician has chosen to use a direct burial wire, which is always recommended for outdoor use. You can see him prepping the wire here by removing the jacket and using the rip cord to pull off the rest of the jacket to expose the conductors. And this is cutting the jacket off, the shield, and the rip cord to leave just the four conductors that is needed for power and control. Here he's prepping all four of the conductors by exposing the conductive part. And now he is pulling the wire through the back of the conduit to get it to length to be able to screw it into the uh, terminals. You can see that he is making a sensitivity adjustment by going all the way clockwise and then backing off about a quarter of a turn. He's making all the final connections by using a flathead to secure the conductors into the photo eye. Refer to the manufacturer's manual for wiring.
Now we'll take our impact gun and just lightly screw the screws back in to the housing, securing it to the photo eye. Turn the photo eye 180 degrees around and finger tighten the bolts. Now that we've got our uh, conduit the length that we want it, we'll go ahead and mount it to the guide post. We're just going to use a half inch rigid single hole strap as well as a self tapping screw. You can remove the control board housing of the gate operator. Feed the conductor that's attached to the photo Y through the housing. And this particular housing uh, does not make it easy to accommodate a fitting. So he's just going to pull the conduit all the way through the control board housing. Now he's going to prep the wire by exposing the rip cord and pulling the rip cord back to a certain length. This will depend on your particular way that you want to do it, but he pulls it back to a length to where he just exposes a little bit of the conductors prior to them being terminated inside the control board. And the same goes for the other end of the wire. We're going to cut the jacket, cut the shield, and cut the rip cord. Now he'll make his final cut to length on the conductors. And depending upon your manufacturer's wiring standard, you will make all your terminations with the wire. Now that we have the photo eye mounted, we'll have a better idea of the placement of the reflector. You can see the technician has the bracket and the reflector laid out. Here we're just getting an idea of where the reflector is going to go on the latch post of the gate. We're going to weld just a couple of tacks on the bracket and then we'll finally burn it in once we get it level how we want it. This is brushing the welds to prep them for paint. The technician is cooling the welds with a wet rag to prep it for paint. And this is the final touch up with paint. Ideally, you'd want to paint the photo eye reflector cover black to match the guidepost. I think this was overlooked by the technician. This reflector hood is not included. Here you can see him using the bolt and a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten the bolt down to get the reflector secure. Here's the final look of the reflector and the photo eye. And now we'll just test the gate operator and confirm that the photo eye is working. For more electronic access control courses, visit the accesscontrolexpertschool.com. For more information on EMX photo eyes, visit emxinc.com.